It's true that there are thousands of ways to express your love and there's no such thing as the weirdest only the weirder. This is obviously a love letter. But there is no signature on it. The actual fact is there is actually a pair of lace panties in it. What's even more outrageous is that it's only been two days since the incident. The main character was not only kissed by someone but also had a girl take off her clothes to seduce him. This is the first time I've ever seen a girl who was so happy to be with me that she was able to get away with it. Just a short while ago the hero successfully joined the calligraphy club. And all the members of this club are girls. The fact that they are so well endowed. But a whole year has passed and he still hasn't been able to find a girlfriend. The reason for all of this is because of his own faults. It's like right now the beautiful president is complaining that the cleaning job is too tiring. The man is already so pathetic but he doesn't even try to comfort him. But not only does the male lead not comfort them he also spits out that this has nothing to do with himself. At the same time he's complimenting himself on how good Sha Shui's calligraphy is. This comment almost pissed off Sha Shui and she went up to him with a duty. Then Hannah finally couldn't listen anymore and she stepped up to speak for the male lead. But before she can play Nanjo who came out of nowhere is already cleaning up. After that the hero's sister joins in the fight. Seeing so many people defending the male lead Shayuki rushed to be very depressed. Obviously she failed once again in her attempts to make a fool out of herself. And the male lead is also very hard inside. Because after all this time he still doesn't have a girlfriend. But this thought comes and goes quickly. Because the next day the hero received a love letter. Even though it was just an anonymous love letter. But it still made the hero ecstatic. Being single often means a sad life and now he finally has a new chance. In the midst of his excitement the hero realizes that there is one more item left on the table. But when he opens it he is confused. Because it contains a pair of lace panties that have already been worn. He rushes to his best friend Shoma. He is worried that this is a prank being played by the other side. But Shoma thinks it might be a modern version of the Cinderella story. Just a pair of lace panties instead of a crystal slipper. Since this item was placed in the calligraphy room ahead of time. Then it's likely that Cinderella is one of the members of the calligraphy club. The hero heard this and felt it made sense. So he came home and tried to experience wearing lace panties. The result was that he was made to suffer throughout the night. The next day he hurriedly went to the calligraphy club to look for clues. However he bumped into Sha Shui around the corner. He thought to himself that if the other person was Cinderella she must have valued the key very much. Before he could say anything Sha Shui took the key of her own accord. She also warmly invited the hero to go to the teacher's house for a rest. The man then froze in place. The man was so happy that he had forgotten all about Cinderella. After school the hero once again saw Shayuki petting a dog. But the hero didn't realize that she was waiting for him. It is known that girls who like dogs are usually very sentimental. When Sasuke offered to let the hero pet her head the hero couldn't find a reason to refuse. Then the hero is convinced that Cinderella is probably Sha Shue. To confirm the hero returns home and asks his sister. The sister told him that the last person to leave the calligraphy club was Sasuke. Then the hero decided to take action. He takes out his lace panties and love letters and confronts Sasuke. But this kind of action will definitely make Sha Shue think that he is a pervert. Of course this is just a figment of the hero's imagination. In order to keep his demeanor the male lead still invites Sha Shue out. He took her to an upscale Japanese restaurant. I thought that the male lead would be a bit more euphemistic. I was expecting him to be a bit more polite but I was surprised when he went straight to the point. He asked her if she was hiding something from him. It's like having some kind of special relationship or something. But it doesn't matter what he said he didn't expect Shashua to run out of the house with her bag. The first thing you need to do is to get your hands dirty. The next day the two unexpectedly met. The first day of the year the two of them met unexpectedly but Shashua deliberately avoided the hero. This makes the hero start to doubt himself. But Nanjo who is on the sidelines says that if he doesn't want the girl to run away he should take action against her. Once it's someone she likes shall be a deer in the headlights. So after school the male lead takes the attitude of giving it a try. On the way back he forcefully traps Shayuki in his arms and he stated that he knew her secret. Just when the male lead was feeling just as hard unexpectedly Sha Shui acquiesced. While the male lead was a bit surprised when he first found out he didn't hate Sha Shui's actions. After all the flood of power in his body can finally be released. Shush the words Sha Shui immediately said tomorrow after school to the calligraphy club and then have a detailed discussion. However when the hero arrived as promised Sha Shui had already arrived. In fact Sha Shui has been looking for someone who can tolerate her. She did feel that the male lead is a very good person. So she told the male lead to rush to close his eyes. When the male lead opened them again he was directly stunned. Sha Shui actually volunteered to request to be the male master's slave. Saying that she also had to hand the chain of the collar to the male master. Seeing the dog being reprimanded by its owner she wished she could be treated like a dog. The hero full of positive energy decisively refuses. Then he finds Shoma and spills his guts. While the panty giving Cinderella is not found he discovers Shayuki's untold secret. This comes as a bit of a surprise to Shoma. He suggests that the hero rush to investigate the other two. So the hero finds Tokiwa under the guise of helping him. But he had just sat down for less than two and a half minutes when Tokihana felt a flood of power. 
she quickly left. The hero was mesmerized as he watched Tokiwa's adorable face as she hurriedly ran away. Then Sha Shua suddenly hugged the male lead from behind and started to actively seduce him. The first thing she did was to make the hero angry hoping that he would ravage her. The idea is to make him angry so that he will be able to get rid of him. The man's heart is in the right place, and he's not responding to it. And this scene was exactly what Tokiwa had seen. In response the battle between the two women officially began. The two women have been fighting for a long time but they have been fighting for a long time, and they have been fighting for a long time. She has been on a date with the main character yesterday, and ate a hamburger. This statement is really effective angry when the flower of a smoke and disappeared. And at that moment Shashua was still describing the exciting scene. In fact she is deliberately said to hide behind the bookshelf of the time flower hearing. She left with a guidebook on pet grooming seeing that her purpose had been accomplished. While the male lead is getting more and more misunderstood the more he explains. The good thing is that Tokiwa's request was very simple. She asked the male lead to go on a date with her for the weekend. When they get home the hero is confused about the date. It's hard to believe that Tokiwa is Cinderella. The awkwardness of this scene is that her younger sister Mizuha happens to stumble upon it. At a moment's notice the day of the date arrives. The two of them are like a couple. Not only do they watch the hottest war movies but they also eat the hero's favorite hamburger together. But the good times didn't last long when Tokiwa went to the restroom she met a gangster. The main character arrives just in time when they are trying to do something bad to Tokiwa. He pulls Tokiwa away and runs away. The next day the hero finds Shoma. He claims that he is not sure if Tokiwa is a Cinderella. But the first date is a very exciting one for the hero. But just then Tokiwa sends a text message. She claims to have something important to discuss with the hero. Possibly Tokiwa wants to say something about the anonymous love letters and panties. This is the first time that the male lead has gone to the appointment with a lot of enthusiasm. The first time they meet Tokiwa praises the male lead. The first thing that I want to do is to make him my slave. But when they meet she is full of compliments and wants the guy to be her slave. But the hero doesn't know what to do and rejects Tokiwa on the spot. So to show her sincerity Tokiwa actually offered her most important thing to the male lead. But not only did he not take it he called her a pervert. This is the first time I've ever seen a woman in the world with a penis and I've never seen one. The slave who doesn't listen should be disciplined. The man's mouth was forced into the panties and the man's mouth was forced into the panties. The man was stunned and fainted on the spot. And the man will receive a different surprise every day. At this point the hero fixed his eyes. It turns out to be Tokiwa hinting that her breasts are super substantial. After school the male lead finds Tokiwa to discuss the claim. The first thing you need to do is to get your hands on a pair of underwear. It's just a lot of talk and a lot of anger. The main character has been avoiding her ever since the panties in the mouth incident. So today Tokiwa specially sent a bra to apologize. But that's what got the guy thinking. Then Tokiwa's school uniform becomes a vacuum. I didn't realize that Tokiwa knew what the hero was thinking. She was a pervert. The man is not happy about the perversion. She seems to have forgotten about stuffing the fat man into her mouth. It turns out that this is a unique benefit that Tokiwa gives to her slaves. But this seems like torture to the male lead. If he doesn't run now he will experience a life of darkness. He thought he had escaped from this. But he didn't realize that he had to open the locker to find out. The familiar formula is just a new place and a new person. It's just too much of a bully. The furious male lead arrived at the Ministry of Books and rode in only two and a half minutes. The moment he opened the door the hero was dumbfounded. He was like a deflated ball just wanting to get out of there. But it's better to talk than it is to sing. The man can only break the pot in a hurry. After all the sand snow this dress is really too much. I didn't realize that this sentence was a bullseye. The first time I've seen this I've seen it and I've seen it and I've seen it and I've seen it and I've seen it. Today's pet dog is the maid's look. The man of the house took it as a joke. But it's okay shall just return the book later. But the positive male lead is not interested in the maid instead he wants her to hurry up and change her clothes. In fact Shayuki had this idea too, five minutes ago. The key to the handcuffs accidentally fell into the chest. And now the only way is for the hero to get the key out. That's a terrible thing to say. Unexpectedly the hero was going to get the girl to come and help. But that thought came and went quickly. Mainly at this moment Shashua wanted to go to the toilet so badly that she couldn't hold it in any longer. But even though Sandy Snow asked again and again the male lead still had to think again and again. Finally after some thought struggle the male lead is still reluctant to go down. But there's a lot to be said about that grunt. Though the process is more difficult the good thing is that there is no danger. Shashua still kept her promise and deleted the photos. So she once again made the request of wanting to be a dog and the conditions offered were very tempting. Whether it's her body or her soul shall give it all for free. In short she can do anything. After a brief moment of hesitation the male lead once again rejected Shashua's request. However after the events of the past two days the hero has forgotten about the Cinderella who gave him the panties. But it's a good thing his best friend Shouma reminded him of that. However Tokiha can be ruled out. Because all she does is gag with her panties. Even when it comes to giving out benefits to slaves she's obviously straightforward. As for Seiki Senpai it's also impossible. 
After all she's hell-bent on being a pet dog and only wants to be ravished by the male lead. Then right now it's Nanjo who is the most suspicious. Because she gets shy when she looks at the male lead which is a total sign of falling in love. That's also when the hero receives a text message from Shayuki. She tells the hero to hurry up and come to the Shido department. And the male lead has long lost his majestic demeanor, so he can only obediently do as he is told. But unbeknownst to him he was stopped halfway by Tokiwa. Then under her magical operation the hero was actually tricked into a classroom. And what's even more outrageous is that he can't open his eyes. But when the hero realized something was wrong it was already too late. But when the hero realized something was wrong it was already too late. But the man who is missing the strings took it seriously. She also knows that the hero is going to look for Sha Shui which also happens to touch Tokiwa's secret. The girl's mother who is a woman's daughter has been arrested and sentenced to death for her crimes. So Tokiwa takes off her knee socks. After that she let the hero kiss the feet of her two and a half meter long legs. It's just hard to tell if she has foot odor. Of course the male lead didn't agree. Then Tokiwa had to forcefully open the stunt. But about this stunt is interesting. The first kiss of the male lead was about to be lost like this so it was good that Sasuke saved the day. Just as the battle between the two began the most suspicious person Nanjo finally appeared. She dragged the hero out of the classroom single-handedly. The unexpected Tokiwa intentionally trips and falls with the aim of flattening her opponent's chest. On the other side Nanjo loudly states that she doesn't want to see the male lead being pestered by another girl. Is she a normal person then? Or is she the Cinderella who gives away her panties? The next day the hero tries to confirm his thoughts. But Nanjo simply ignores him. And he's sorry for what happened yesterday. It's just that friends should be open with each other. When he said this Nanjo immediately became interested. Since we're all friends but we haven't even hung out together. The male lead immediately got the message. In the blink of an eye they arrived at an arcade. It must be said that Nanjo's marksmanship is simply divine. But the hero and Shouma were just fuming. At Nanjo's strong suggestion they formed a duo. Just as the duo is about to go on a rampage the hero accidentally slips on his feet. Luckily Shoma's cell phone was quick to catch him. But for Nanjo the action was a bit too much to take in. But for Nanjo this is simply too sweet. She pulled out her cell phone and snapped a picture. Afterwards the guys started to party. Not only did they catch Nanjo's favorite doll but they also took a photo together to symbolize their friendship. Unbeknownst to them this is where the bad news begins. Now it's time to go home. The man insists on taking Nanja back. But then Nanja finally got up the courage to say that it's better to go out with two people next time. Before the male lead can respond it suddenly starts to rain heavily. However looking at Nanja's body drenched by the rain the hero is unknowingly intoxicated. And this scene just happens to be noticed by Nanjo. But it's her body that's to blame and the hero can't miss the chance to feast his eyes on it. In order to cover up the embarrassment the hero rushed to buy two cups of hot milk tea. When he came back he found Nanja looking at Shoma's photo. The hero froze straight in place for two, five seconds. He said that if she needed any help in chasing after Shoma just ask. Nanja looks panicked and leaves with her bag in hand. This made the male lead look confused. The next day the hero asks her why. But Nanjo simply ignored him and got up to leave. So the hero rushes after her. It turns out that for countless nights Nanja has been imagining things. And it's all down to the male lead. Hearing this the male lead instantly understood in a second thinking could there be something wrong with him. It doesn't matter so much as long as he can get to know Nanja better even if there is no mistake he has to admit it. However the two are getting closer and closer. When he saw how cute Nanja really was the hero was sure that she was the Cinderella he was looking for. However this thought comes and goes quickly. What's more Nanjo finally reveals her true nature. She's actually a girl who likes to see emotions happen between guys. She made it a point to draw an exclusive romance manga for both the main character and Shouma. This is outrageous in the eyes of the main character. And Nanjo was just checking out the material when she was looking through Shuma's pictures on her cell phone earlier. While hobbies are a personal freedom. But at least don't use your own people as material and go through the person's consent as well. Hearing that Nanjo decisively refused. After all there are a lot of girls waiting to see the sequel. What's even more outrageous is that Nanjo in order to be able to create on. She went so far as to ask the male lead not to have a romantic relationship with a girl. If she finds out there will be consequences. And the male lead is still bothered by the fact that Nanjo is not Cinderella. On this day the hero opens his locker only to find a surprise inside. It's actually a picture of himself and his schoolmate. Obviously it was taken secretly when the duo took the key. This sexy knee-high little black silk and bold and open little suspenders. And the key rabbit ears and little round tail. All in all that's a lot of turn on factor. To others the girl goes out of her way to dress up as a bunny girl to join the Shido department. Her purpose is just to get bored with the male lead. Truthfully it was not the case in fact she wanted to buy more time to train the male lead as her slave. While the older sister is the minister and also has always been at odds with Tokihana senpai. But she also has no right to refuse Tokiwa's membership. But let her dress up as a bunny girl and trick her a little bit. However what she didn't expect was that this outfit was favored by the male lead. This was just too much in the school teacher's opinion. In fact she herself would like to wear it only there is no size suitable for her proud figure. 
This statement can be heard. This is obviously her declaring war on the average figure of Tokiwa. The two women have been in a stalemate the man rushed forward to persuade the fight. After all if the two of them get hurt the one who will suffer in the end is himself. The schoolmistress was the winner in the end. She uses her position as a minister to ask Tokiwa to serve tea and water. It's only then that the hero notices Nanja who is silent next to him. It turns out that she has joined the Shido department as well. And she doesn't have to dress up like a bunny girl. It's because she received a gift from Nanja. And the gift is a beautiful manga of the main character and Shoma. When Tokiwa sees this she becomes interested. But unbeknownst to her the manga is simply too exciting. It turns out she's a subtle little girl. After only two and a half seconds she was mesmerized. Not surprisingly Tokiwa has been completely assimilated. Even though the conflict between the two girls was resolved the school teacher still taught her a lesson. It's clear that this shudo department has become their lair. However just after school ends the hero receives an anonymous threatening letter. And there's a picture attached to the envelope. The other party threatens him to come to the astronomy department right now. When the hero arrives it turns out to be a little girl waiting for him. And upon closer inspection she's still a very cute girl. In fact the girl didn't know what to do. She had to resort to threatening the male lead with a photo. At first she was very satisfied with just the glance from afar. But without realizing it she fell in love with the male lead. Hearing this the hero thought the girl was his Cinderella. This is a blatant slur on the girl's part. Then the male lead realized that he had misunderstood. He was embarrassed and backed away. Inadvertently he pressed the switch of the projector. Good guy it turns out that his best friend Shoma is the girl's target. The two then go to a milk tea store. The hero learns through conversation that the girl's name is Phoenix Koharu. She has been secretly in love with Shouma for a long time. She wants the hero to match them up. However the hero is full of doubts about what is going on with this photo. It turns out that the girl is the head of the astronomy department. She wants to know what's going on in the Shudo department. Her purpose of taking the photo is to prevent the hero from not wanting to be their god of love Cupid. But in the male lead's mind there was no need for help at all simply because Shouma was already attracted to girls like her. It's just that Haru understands all of this. It's just that she seems to be petite and a cute little girl. In reality she's a third year senior. Hearing that the male lead was also shocked. However looking at Haru and her schoolmates identical blue skirts the male lead had to believe what she was saying. Nothing more than setting up the senior schoolmate dating Shouma was simply impossible. But when the hero is about to refuse unexpectedly Haru pulls out the killer. When the hero goes home he sees his sister who is one year younger than him. So with the hero fooling around as expected Shoma and Haru fall in love at first sight. Then the two even exchange contact information. And the depressed male lead can only agonize over their sweetness. However looking at the anonymous love letter in his hand the hero didn't expect love to come so fast. But where is his Cinderella? The next day the male lead told Haru about the Cinderella who delivered the panties. So with her analysis Cinderella is not necessarily from the Shudo department. If we narrow down the investigation. Then any girl who had entered the building of the Shudo department that day could be a suspect. Listening to the king is like listening to a conversation. After that the hero got up and went to investigate. Suddenly he remembered that after he went back that day Mr. Tian went to clean again. He also realized that the door to the ministry was also unlocked. Just as the hero was thinking hard he was met by a female student. Her eyes met the hero's she didn't even notice that she was not aware of the fact that he was in a hurry to get out of the office. She didn't notice the paper at her feet. She was on the verge of falling down but the hero saved the day. Otherwise the consequences were unimaginable. It was worth mentioning that the other party was not injured. But she has been lying still the reason is that she does not want to leave the male lead. This can't help but make the hero very puzzled. However it wasn't long before Fujimoto personally made chocolates for the hero. And without saying a word she's going to come up to the hero and approach him. The reason she does this is to recharge her battery so that she doesn't doze off in the afternoon class. Obviously the male lead can't understand this marvelous logic. But the hero has long asked Haru to investigate in secret. It's just that there's nothing abnormal about Fujimoto in her daily life. And her grades are out of this world. But it's worth mentioning that Fujimoto and the male lead have been having more frequent chance encounters lately. Is she the Cinderella who delivers the panties? But unbeknownst to her Fujimoto approaches the hero again the next day. And she asks the hero to participate in a volunteer program. To put it bluntly it's picking up garbage on the street. The man is a very good man but he is a very good man and he is a very good man and he is a very good man and he is a very good man. It's just a chance to investigate Fujimoto isn't it? The two of them were overheard by the school teacher. The day of the event came not long after. As expected the girl who wants to be the main character's pet dog also comes along. But then a small incident occurs. Fujimoto and the hero are too close to each other. After all in her opinion the hero can only belong to her. It doesn't matter what she says Fujimoto immediately gets upset. She hugged the male lead directly in front of the older sister. Although she wasn't as sexy as her sister she hadn't been convinced by anyone in the area of shapes. But she didn't realize that while she was working the schoolgirl started her own plan. She lured the male lead to a place where no one was around. Schoolmarm said the dog is most jealous of the master and other people too close. 
Without waiting for the male lead to react she directly pounced on him. And she also marked the male lead's face by licking it. Seeing that the male lead is about to lose his grip. Then he remembers that when he was a child his grandfather taught him how to deal with dogs. That is to boldly tickle her. But there is a lot to be said about where to tickle her. But then the hero regretted it. Only because he didn't stop at the schoolgirl's pleading. But that thought came and went quickly. Obviously the effect of the completion of this plan has exceeded expectations. Then the schoolmate went back contentedly. And just as the hero was planning to investigate Fujimoto she accidentally fell into the river. This is simply very outrageous in his opinion. Of course her clothes are all wet. And the male lead was gentlemanly enough to hand over his jacket. But Fujimoto took the clothes and just sucked them in. She had no intention of wearing it. Only the hero didn't notice anything suspicious. On the second day the hero talks to Shoma about investigating Fujimoto. Sadly he still doesn't have a clue. However she is simply too normal compared to the other girls. That's also when Fujimoto comes face to face. And she was looking for the male lead this time to thank him for the jacket he gave her yesterday. So she invites the hero to the student council's office. However the cozy environment and the romantic music makes the hero relax. The dessert is made by Fujimoto as a thank you gift. But the male lead simply tasted it but he was not expecting him to be instantly overwhelmed by the deliciousness. She thinks to herself that her Cinderella would have done well if she had been Fujimoto. However unbeknownst to her after tasting the dessert an inexplicable drowsiness came to her mind. Perhaps because of the romantic atmosphere the hero and Fujimoto fell asleep together in a short while. But in his sleep the hero heard a strange sound. And he also felt a cool sensation. Then the hero woke up to see that Fujimoto was actually picking his pants. He rushed to tactically dodge. This was just, just clueless to the male lead. And Fujimoto who has been discovered doesn't pretend anymore she just shows her face. It turns out that Fujimoto is an eccentric girl who only likes smells. And by taking off the male lead's pants she's trying to take away the underwear. This also made the male lead realize with a jolt. It's no wonder that Fujimoto was hugging without saying a word as well as sucking on his jacket for a while. It was only because Fujimoto had become obsessed with the male lead's smell. On this day under the threat of Haru the hero had to organize a date for four people. But when he gets home he frets about who he's going to date. Only because the girls around the main character are all very strange. Fujimoto for example is an eccentric girl who is obsessed with the smell of the main character's body. Nanjo on the other hand is a girl who likes to watch emotions happen between the boys. However after thinking about it the main character takes the older sister who just wants to be a dog with him. After all she's halfway normal. At this point the schoolteacher was surprised how Haru addressed Shouma Senpai. Just as she was about to ask the reason it was good that the male lead immediately covered her mouth. Then the male lead hurriedly explained that he was just talking about love. This is the reason why Shoma thinks that the relationship between the two of them is really good. Then the male lead told the reason why. And he also bought a snapper yakitori which gagged the schoolmate. And with the help of the hero and the schoolmarm Haru and Shoma's relationship was on fire. However after this date the two's usual text chatting also developed into voice interaction. And for all of this Haru had to thank the hero. It was him who made himself who originally didn't have the courage finally get close to his favorite person. The first thing you need to do is to get your hands on some of the most popular products and services in the world and you'll be able to do it all in one place. However he didn't realize that he had already deleted the photos after he agreed to set them up. In fact Haru knows that relying on the male lead's help is not going to sustain her path to a relationship. So she decides to tell Shouma about her schoolmate's identity. However right after school Haru asked Shouma out to the place where they first met. And she pulls open her jacket revealing the bow that symbolizes the third year. After that he plucks up the courage to confess his love to Shouma. And Shouma's answer was a shock. It's amazing that he rejected such a cute girl because of her age. This seemed outrageous to the hero. He immediately found Shouma and he was just a bit of a scolding. It's because of his age that the two of them can't go out. Isn't that an outrageous reason? In fact after Shoma's first encounter with Kasumi he's been going to the same place a lot. He hopes to meet Haru by chance. But Shoma didn't get to see her once. But Shoma never got to meet anyone because Kasumi was always hiding behind him. When he thought about it Shoma felt that he was really a bit of an asshole. He would actually make such a cute girl cry. Then the hero finds Haru again and comforts her. Rejecting a girl's courageous confession because of Shoma's special fetish. This is simply irresponsible behavior. And Shoma doesn't even understand the benefits of girls being older. This statement speaks to Haru's heart. Then Haru followed the main character's lead and scolded Shoma. But after a few moments Haru regretted it. She was so upset that Shoma's appearance had disrupted her rhythm. The next moment Kasumi started to speak incoherently. Shoma had come to apologize sincerely. It's his fault that he likes younger girls. But for Haru's sake Shoma wanted them to start out as friends. Shoma's words didn't matter as Haru froze for two and a half seconds. This is either agreeing to go out nor explicitly rejecting but also just wanting to maintain a unique relationship. Isn't this the proper bad guy from the drama? Shuma was counted out before realizing that it was Haru who was joking. It's just that his reason for rejecting her was too much. In fact Haru's idea was simple. As long as she can stay by Shuma's side she will be happy. 
However, right after the two of them made up an accident happened without a word. Shoma flipped the light switch in the room. The next moment there were pictures of Shoma all over the room. This moment he was successfully scared again. On this day the male lead who is being tortured by a couple of girls complains to his sister. It's clear from the chat that Mizuha relies heavily on her brother. Then the doorbell rings. However when he sees that it's his sister who wants to be a pet dog the hero is not calm. Just because the schoolmate rushed to his room without saying a word. Not only does she claim that this is her dream kennel. Before the male lead could react the schoolgirl took out the props she had prepared in advance. It seems she really wants to be a dog. In just two and a half seconds she dressed herself up as a dog. And the purpose of her visit was to find a lost thing. She wants the hero to treat himself like a dog. The hero is really a decent man with a pattern. But that thought came and went quickly. The schoolteacher immediately took out the male lead's best friend Benji and blackmailed him into behaving. Seeing this the male lead was on the ball. He petted his schoolmate's head like a dog. Just when the two were having fun in their room they didn't realize that Rui suddenly pushed the door of the room open. She called the male lead out for an emergency meeting. While the male lead was already trying to explain Rui obviously didn't believe him. And the older sister was happy. Seeing that her purpose had been accomplished she went back contentedly. The doorbell rang again and this time it was the younger sister. This time it's the younger sister Tokiwa who is here. She was a very simple person and she came here to teach the male lead a lesson. And she's got the hero dressed up as a rabbit queen. But the male lead is selectively deaf. He stated that he couldn't hear at all. But Tokiwa directly flashed a comic book. However the male lead has no choice but to transform. But this change is bad. Unexpectedly this look is simply tailor made for him. This not only made Tokiwa laugh but also thought that choosing the hero as a slave was the wisest. Then the next step was Tokiwa's reward. That's also when Nazuha pushed open the door to the room as if she were stepping on it. She didn't give the duo any chance at all. But after these two accidents. No matter how the hero explains it his image of greatness in his sister's heart crumbles. However as soon as Tokiwa leaves Nanjo calls. She's not only the one responsible for drawing that manga. She was not only responsible for drawing that manga but she was also the one who planned the plan to screw the hero with two women. It's only because Nanjo didn't have the inspiration to continue working on the manga that she came up with this plan. However after hanging up the phone the male lead realizes that his underwear which was placed under the mattress is missing. The next day the male lead is on fire and tells Haru and Shoma what happened. After the two of them analyzed although the panties were taken it was actually a good thing. After all the scope of who is Cinderella is narrowed down. And only the two had been at the scene that day. So the male lead decided to start his investigation with the schoolmate first. He found the schoolmate first under the guise of a date. Hearing this offer of course the schoolmate agreed readily. After all her dream was to be the male lead's doggy, and she naturally agreed wholeheartedly. The next day the two came to the playground. This doggy schoolgirl wants to explore when she sees something rare. The two of them are in the middle of a journey to the amusement park where they will be able to explore the area and see what's in store for them. The male lead said that a good dog should always be next to its master. But the thought of what to do now to investigate the schoolmate has become a tricky problem for the male lead. At that moment a roller coaster just passed by. The hero thought for a while and then had a plan. He uses the wind pressure to make his skirt float. But can it really work? So he took his sister on a roller coaster ride. Back on the ground he realizes that he was overthinking it. After that he took his sister on a jumper. Since the hero himself sat on it. So the result was predictable. He didn't see anything. But the male lead just won't give up instead he takes his schoolmate to try various ways to play. The first time I saw this was when I was a student at the University of California Berkeley and the second time I was a student there. But in order not to let his sister see the difference the male lead let him choose the items he wanted to play. The only thing you can do is to blame yourself for not being able to do anything about it. However following his sister's gaze the hero seems to see the light of victory. Just because the ferris wheel rises high into the sky it becomes a secret room. Then he'll be able to investigate deeper inside. But that thought came and went quickly. Without waiting for the male lead to start the schoolteacher took the initiative. She directly washed the male lead's face with saliva. To put it mildly it was a bath. And by now the sun was about to set. Obviously the male lead's plan will end in failure. But the good thing was that today's date brought the two of them closer together. However the next day was bad. At that time the male lead was teaching Tokiwa her homework. Due to the unintentional playfulness between the two the jealousy of the older sister on the side was instantly knocked over. Only to see her write countless patience. Strangely enough what she reveals in her eyes is helplessness. And this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for Tokiwa. After all there had been strife between the two girls. It would be a good time not to make a move. However the older sister was still indifferent. This is simply very strange in Tokiwa's opinion. Then she kissed her. But then she kissed her and the two of them fell to the ground. And that's when the older sister finally couldn't take it. She ran out of the classroom. The man is good from noon until the end of the school. In the end the two of them went back to the Shido department. The girl's behavior today was a bit unusual. If it were normal she would have gone to war with Tokiwa. Is it possible that she was the one who took the panties and that's why she's being scrupulous? 
Thinking of this the hero directly questioned the schoolmate is she the one who took the panties? Obviously the schoolmate's behavior is incomprehensible to normal people. But it's good to rule out the possibility of her being Cinderella. However on the way back the hero runs into Tokiwa again. At this point it's pouring rain outside. The two of them live in opposite directions. But the main character insists on giving Tokiwa a ride home. But it's not a big deal because the hero caught a cold. She immediately invited the man into the house to rest. However, while Tokiwa was preparing to boil water, the hero visited Tokiwa's bedroom. He takes this opportunity to investigate the matter of the underwear. However, he finally opens the drawer. As there are so many different styles, it's not easy for the hero to find them. But then Tokiwa appeared behind the hero. But she also took a picture of him looking for his underwear. The man's life has been ruined by the fact that he's been in the wrong place. The next day at school, the hero puts the spirit of slavery to good use. And this aroused the strong dissatisfaction of the school sister. She couldn't help but speculate could it be that Tokiwa had seized the handle and forced the male master to be obedient. After all one's master would not be interested in Tokiwa. Hearing this Tokiwa didn't retort but instead grabbed the male master and didn't let go. She had to pursue the male master to ask him whether he liked the schoolmates or the schoolmates. But to the male lead they are both unique treasures. If he has to choose one he prefers the older sister. This statement does not matter immediately angry when the flower is a fist is a hammer. The schoolmates on the other hand are gloating. Seeing this Tokiwa was not happy. She immediately unleashed the master's dog walking skills. Unexpectedly the male lead was tamed by Tokiwa in one day. This is undoubtedly mocking the schoolmate's special hobby. It's clear that this fight is still a slight victory for Tokiwa. The next step is for the male lead to suffer. After all he just said that he likes her. Not only did Tokiwa change the hero into a butler's costume but she also took him shopping and showed him off. What's even more outrageous is that she makes the male lead kneel down and sing her conquests. However because of one tone of voice is not pronounced correctly the male lead was trampled under the feet of the time flower ravaged mercilessly. However she still understands the importance of subjugation. But she still understands that it takes a slap and a candy to conquer a slave. What's more crucial is that while she talks about punishment she actually wants the male master to stroke her hair. But stroking was comforting. That's right Tokiwa just felt so hot and wanted a cold drink. Unexpectedly she stumbled and she accidentally fell on the bed. And what Tokiwa expected to happen next happened as expected. But what she didn't expect was for the hero to rummage through the bed and find his underwear. This is definitely a pot of ice water to douse the fire of love. However Tokiwa still wants to mess around. But the male lead doesn't give her a chance. He's just going to break the boring slave contract. It's finally time for summer vacation. But the hero is very upset. It's just that it's another summer vacation without a girlfriend. In fact the hero also longs for a sweet love. But he's surrounded by strange girls. For example Nanjo who likes to draw a Biao manga. In other people's opinion she is confessing to the hero. But it's not true she's just using him as a source of inspiration. The most important thing is that when she doesn't have any inspiration she will just lie down on top of the male lead and use him as her source of inspiration. The actual fact is she's actually using the male lead as her source of inspiration. This is a good thing for the male lead everything is ready to go but in the end it is Nanjio's a mischief. It's a very outrageous thing to do in the eyes of the hero. And what's more Fujimoto the president of the student council just won't let go of the hero when he sees her. But she's much better than Nanjo. At least she gives him a coupon for a group swim when she's done with him. But the hero's first thought is his best friend Shoma. The first thing that comes to mind is his best friend Shoma, and it's no wonder he doesn't have a girlfriend. But when the hero pushes the door to take a look, while the images are a bit unpleasant it's a good thing the hero doesn't understand these things. But Haru is still very much in need of an explanation. While the male lead was helping to cut the picture he asked if the two were interested in going swimming together. Sniffing Shoma was amused. He said that if Haru goes he will go too. It seems that even the bond between the brothers has soured after he got a girlfriend. In the end the reluctant hero decided to ask the four girls to go swimming together. The main purpose of this is to find out the Cinderella who is teasing him. But this is simply better said than some. Only because the male lead hasn't even started the action yet Tokiha asked the male lead to go on the water slide with her. But the school marm immediately stops it offering to go surfing. But the two of them are pulling away and treating the male lead too little like a human being. At once the male lead regretted his reckless decision very much. However in order to compete for the male lead's right to use it. The big showdown between the schoolmates and the schoolmates is about to kick off. But what one would never expect is that the schoolmarm just casually struck the schoolmarm and the schoolmarm was completely defeated. But the location of this blow is very delicate. To this Tokiwa won big. She naturally has the privilege of prioritizing the use of the male lead. But before the male lead could get ready Tokiwa took the lead. She went straight for the inside of the water slide. Unbeknownst to her the male lead fell into the hands of the schoolmarm just after she fell off. That's also when a sudden shocking wave up to two and a half meters high came crashing down on him. The main man was in a state of shock but he realized that it was the waves that made everything happen. But the hero is not good but after a round of play down but forget about Rua. The man decided to play with Rua in the afternoon to apologize. 
but as soon as he stepped out of the warm water Rua told him a secret. The only reason for this is because Rui helped her pick out a swimsuit for her sister. And this anime is the thank you gift. The man is petrified of his own existence. But Rui is good. She talked and talked and was mesmerized. Apparently it was her first time reading that kind of manga. But she felt it was a wonderful world full of excitement. Even though the main character tried to explain Rui just wouldn't listen. However while they are arguing they run into Haru who is working part time at the swimming pool. She is recruiting participants for the event. The hero is instantly intrigued. But unbeknownst to him this is an air confession event for girls. As for the scoring is based on the audience's screams. Of course the girls in the audience were happy to participate. But then the older sister proposes that the winner will have the right to order the male lead around once. But for the male lead's opinion the girls would give take protection. Then under Haru's presidency the contest officially began. Only the winner's prize is a bit shabby. But it's good to have the right to order the male lead once. The older sister was first to make an appearance. She tells the story of her time with the male lead. If the male lead is willing to go out with her then the older sister will give everything she has. In short she wants to be the hero's dog. In the end the schoolgirl gets 92 points. The second contestant is the schoolmate Tokiwa. And she's always wanted to conquer the hero and be his slave. That's why her confession is so dominant. If the hero dares to show affection to other girls she will definitely break his legs. The Tokiwa gets a score of 95. Contestant 3 is Nanjo. She usually draws caricatures of the hero. And her declaration of love is that the hero can only be seen by her alone. Simply put she only draws manga of the main character alone. What I didn't expect was for Nanjo to get 98 points. Next up is the last contestant the hero's sister Rui. Since she lives with the hero every day she tells touching stories. She shares the sweet and sour of life. However she didn't expect to hold up the scene's scoreboard with just one line. I like this kind of brother. Even though Rui won the final championship. But in the male lead's opinion this is nothing more than family bonding. He then finds Mizuha and talks to him. Then he realizes that the Cinderella he has been searching for is his own sister. Then he realizes that Cinderella is his sister who he has been searching for for so long. Then she hides in the storage closet. Only because they are brother and sister. That's why Mizuha didn't leave her name on the letter. The main character is a bit incredulous about this. Then the hero made a bold decision. He lifts up Mizuha's skirt and checks her panties. The mystery that has been puzzling the hero is finally solved. It turns out that his sister is the Cinderella who has a crush on him. However, not surprisingly, there was still an accident. Riyia gagged him straight away. Then she told the story of how they are not brother and sister. The man was unable to accept this fact for the time being. But the next morning the hero woke up to find Rui in his own bed. And she hugged him and kissed him. The first thing that you need to do is to get your hands dirty. The first thing that you need to do is to get your hands on some of the most popular products and services in the world. This in the view of the male master simply is very outrageous. He immediately put Rui reprimanded a meal. But this is not important but by Rua mistakenly thought that he was disliking his own body is not good. Then she jumped on the male lead wanting to prove it. But it's a bad idea. The man didn't put up any resistance. Instead he reveled in the wonderful feeling of oppression. But only for two and a half seconds and in the end reason prevailed over unparalleled pleasure. Afterwards the hero called his father. It turns out that Mizuha's parents died in a car accident when she was very young. The father saw her poor so he adopted Mizuha. And the male lead was also a small child at that time so he forgot about it when he grew up. But from the tone of the hero's father's voice you can tell that he likes Mizuha even more. Then in a fit of anger the hero decided to run away from home. He wanted to use this to defend the last shred of dignity of a normal person. So he finds Shoma and Haru and tells them what he wants. And he says that he is now homeless. Shoma says that a distant relative came to the house a few days ago. Obviously he is politely rejecting the hero. However the hero can only politely choose to believe it. On the contrary Siochun said if the male lead does not mind can come to their own home. But what was never expected was that the male lead just wanted to express his gratitude but unexpectedly his good friend Shoma instantly changed his face. This is the first time I've ever seen a man with a good friend Shoma who has a murderous look in his eyes. This can be described as having a girlfriend do not want one's good friends all. This is the first time that a man is really homeless. He can only lament his miserable life in the gazebo. But at that moment he happens to run into Nanjo who has finished shopping at the supermarket. But then an awkward scene happened. The main character's stomach is really hungry. He said that he hadn't eaten anything for a whole day. However as soon as he said that Nanjo immediately took out the bread that she had just bought. She also handed over the hero's favorite Sanlu milk. She certainly can't let anything happen to him. After all the hero is the hero of his own anime. However after learning about what happened between the hero and Ruihan Nanjo is also the first to comfort him. It's good that such a beautiful and gentle sister isn't a sibling. There's no telling how many boys are after Mizuha at school. This is the first time I've ever seen a girl who is so beautiful and gentle it's good that she's not her own brother or sister. It's a good thing she came here to make a mess of things. But in the end she was really comforting the main character. She realized that something was wrong so she hurriedly made an excuse to leave. 
Instead of going back to the house the hero is wandering around the streets. The two of them are at home and Azuha is flipping through the photos of them as kids. She was so happy to see her face smiling. But the weather was not favorable and suddenly it started pouring. The company is also worried about the safety of the main character Ri rushed out to look for him. But after searching around she didn't find the hero's body. The first time I saw this was when I was a student at the University of California Berkeley and I was a student at the University of California Berkeley. The first thing that happened was that after only two and a half seconds Rua heard a noise at the door. The first time I saw this I was so happy to see you and I'm so happy to see you. After getting caught in the rain the hero naturally fell ill. The first thing you need to do is to get a good deal of money to pay for the services you need. But there's a lot to be said for this care. That is she directly into the quilt. After all what the hero needs now is warmth. Then it wasn't long before the older sister pretended to be asleep. That way she could keep the last trace of her reserve. Carrillo pushed open the door to the room as if she was stepping on it. She didn't give the two of them any chance to explain she just closed the door to the room. However just at the most critical moment I didn't expect the schoolgirl to come out again. And she also brought the most popular novel of the moment. But when she saw her sister pretending to be asleep on the bed she was furious. Then she had to drag her sister down from the bed. They were tortured and tossed around and the older sister couldn't pretend to be asleep anymore. But when faced with Tokiwa's questioning she began to play dumb. In fact she told Tokiwa about the male lead's illness. And the schoolteacher made it a point to emphasize. The male lead was now irresistible and could be caught by them at will. These words made the schoolteacher a little flustered. Watching a fight about to break out between the two the male lead stopped them in time. What's strange is that both of them seem to be particularly obedient today. They both unanimously chose to call a truce. Turns out before they came they had already divided up the labor. Time Flower was in charge of affairs. And school sister was in charge of managing the temperature of the whole place. Under the careful care of the two women the male lead quickly recovered. And after this mess the gap between the siblings was bridged. Despite the fact that the male lead finds himself surrounded by eccentric people. But the important thing is that they are all cute. So hell slowly grow to like them too. On this day Ri exercised her privilege of ordering the male lead. She asked her brother to act as her boyfriend for a day. And the two are to go on a date as a hot couple. However just as Mizuha was checking out the photos she was startled by the sudden appearance of the male lead. The cell phone also fell into the air. Fortunately the male lead quickly catches the phone. But accidentally discovers Mizuha's true identity. It turns out that besides liking her brother she is also an exhibitionist. But even so she actually likes the hero and wants to be his girlfriend. The anime comes to an end with the hero's firm refusal. Who among all these strange girls will be lucky enough to become the hero's girlfriend? Let's look forward to the next season's update. Well that's it for today's video. Thanks for your support, and watching well see you in the next installment.